What ads are going to work in 2021? What ads are going to work after this Apple update? What ads are going to work? Period. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Bernie and Cheveria. Today, I'm going to be talking about something crucial. All right. Everyone online is looking for these things, If you, especially if you're in the digital marketing space. You're out there looking for what ads are going to work in 2021. What ads are going to work after this Apple update? What ads are going to work? Period. And I have two things for you cold and warm audiences. That's all. There's no need to dive into anything else, really. You're either marketing to a cold audience or a warm audience. Your cold audience is going to be ignoring everyone you know, and your warm audience is basically a retarget campaign. So without further ado, let me break this thing down in paint because this is the simplest way I can show you guys how it works and the fundamentals of how easy and how simple it is, right? Because based off of this is where you're going to get more and more in depth. Right, so you need to master this before you can master anything else in digital marketing in any kind of marketing space. All right, so, so check this out. Now I've drawn a what looks like a funnel here, and it um, is split up into three, maybe four pieces. Right, and you might be asking yourself why? Why did you just make a funnel for no reason, Burn? I'm gonna explain it to you here. It's pretty simple. The reason I made a funnel is because this is what's called a sales funnel. Now this sales funnel travels one direction, downward. Wow. Meaning that people in your sales funnel are gonna start cold. They're gonna get warm. until they're hot and they're considered at the end of the day either a purchase sign up opt-in all right ladies and gents now let's dive into the nitty-gritty right this looks simple enough right looks easy enough but somehow it eludes and evades people the concept of how they should be running their ads and what ads they should be running. They go, oh, I don't know. There's just so many options. I'm just not even sure what to pick. You serious? Dude, look at the sales funnel. If you started running ads and you started running them to a cold audience, meaning that you're ignoring anyone who is involved with you already, anyone who's engaged with you already, technically these are all new fans, new uh, prospective buyers, new uh, pers prospective customers. These are all new people that are going to come buy your product. Now, in the instance where you're throwing all kinds of new people in, right? You're going to run your ad. Here, let me, uh, you're going to run your ad. Bow, bow. And you're going to throw all kinds of new people in there. Bow, 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 bow. And we're talking thousands of impressions. So you're reaching thousands of people. The chances of someone reaching all the way down, not as likely, right? But it happens. You might get someone to fold. But what was really going to happen is as you're throwing all these people in here, this person might come and leave at this point. This person might come and leave at this point. This person might have come and gone all the way down. This person might come and left at that point. So people can come and go in and out of the funnel as many, as many times as they want. It's up to you to initially throw as many new people in there as possible. That's your cold target ad. This is people that have never heard of you and therefore you're going to try to convince them on the first round or on the first go round that, hey, this is my product, it's amazing. And you're gonna give them a few things to ponder on pretty much, okay? You're trying to touch as many people as possible because anyone who's fallen out between here they're going to get a certain ad because I know that if you left at this point, you're probably interested at a certain level to a certain degree. And I know kind of how to get you back in. And it's easier to get people to go from there all the way down. But again, people are going to fall off there, 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 there and here. Right. Say, for instance, um, you came onto my web page and then you actually looked at the product and added to cart. We're going to call this add to cart. Again, some people that went in cold might have added to cart because they thought the product was dece, mad dece. But on that same token, 
I'm going to re-engage you, bring you back in here and try to close you. Boom. With a coupon or something. And some people might leave. It's not, that's not always the case. Wow. Wow. And for the final straw, bow, bow. This is the hottest. Like imagine it being people came onto the site, people added their payment information or people added to cart. And now people added payment information, but they didn't go all the way through. I want to re-engage you with like a 10%, 20% coupon, my friend. Bam. And try to close your ass. The whole concept of all this, the whole concept of these retarget ads, the cold and the warm audiences, the hot audiences, is that it might cost me somewhere around, I don't know, 20 bucks. It might cost me somewhere around 20 bucks to get someone to come buy something up here where it's cold, right? But then it might cost me 15 bucks. A little bit warmer. It's actually probably gonna cost me eight dollars. A little bit warmer. And over here on the hot, I've seen, I've seen, cost per acquisitions or cost per purchases as low as two dollars, my friend. So when you're running your ads, you're not really running that much money over here on this hot or what I would call the ad to cart or the ad payment information because it doesn't cost that much money to get someone who's already interested to come back and buy something, right? These are people up here who don't know you up top people here getting more towards the middle they've seen your brand once or twice they've seen, your, they've seen your ads come and go once or twice they're starting to build that brand trust that brand relationship they're starting to know like and trust who you are so by the time you get to here and they've added their payment information but they left because they weren't really sure about hey is this a real reputable company am i going to get the product bam a 20 percent off coupon hits them because you've retargeted them by the time they've gotten there this is the general outline, right, of how ads work and what you're supposed to be doing on Facebook to re-engage people. Now, the method that people go about it, I mean, it's a crapshoot. People like to do the spiderweb method. People do the fool's gold method. Um, and it, it's a little bit interesting sometimes when you try to get into the nitty gritty of it. But I'm going to go ahead and take you guys into a uh, subsect of my ads. And I'm going to show you how I run some of my ads. I'm going to take you into my boy Elevated and my boy uh, LC and show you how I run their ads and what's going on. But this right here, ladies and gentlemen, take your screenshots because this is the absolute formula, the absolute formula, not even formula for digital marketing, but formula for marketing and sales, period, period, period. I venture to say that you need to go reach out to say, if you're making cold calls, I'm going to cold call you once. You don't know who I am. And then I'm going to go ahead and explain to you who I am, what I do. Can I give you a call back? Can I send you an email? My emails are then going to start turning you into a warmer and warmer lead if they're effective. Now, people sometimes don't make effective marketing so that so that's going to add to the not being successful at the marketing but you need to be able to make good marketing pieces shovel them out in the proper fashion and show them to the right people in order to get sales purchases opt-ins signups what have you this is how marketing and sales works guys they kind of go hand in hand all right guys so i'm going to take you over to my facebook ads manager i'm going to show you guys what the hell is going on over there okay all right guys so here we are in the ads manager and here I'm pulling up for you an artist friend of mine, Elevated, and I have built for them cold engagement and retarget ads, okay? And so what I pretty much did with the Spotify traffic, I'll show you. So what I did with the Spotify traffic, I'm spending five bucks a day and I'm going to want it to ignore anyone who's engaged with me in 30 days or my Facebook engagers, meaning that if you've heard of me, it's not gonna see you. You're, you're, the ad's not gonna get to you. But if you've never heard of me, the ad's definitely gonna get to you. Facebook's gonna make sure of it. Now you need to utilize Facebook because Facebook is one of the most powerful tools that you have in your arsenal as a digital marketer. Facebook, LinkedIn, Google, these are all tools that you can use and they have their time and place. By ignoring people that I've already engaged with, I'm gonna go ahead and go out and reach out to brand new people. And the uh, 106 link clicks, I spent, I don't know, 27 bucks, which isn't actually half bad considering the ad wasn't like the craziest amazing of ad, but I do have a retarget ad over here. Now what this is gonna do is just gonna engage people. I don't have it here to sell anything, but you can see that my custom audience is my Facebook engagers. And that's the only audience I want my ad being shown to.
So I'm re-engaging Facebook engagers. I'm going to re-engage 95% video viewers, and I'm going to re-engage Instagram engagers. Now, why these three? These three are because these three audiences are probably the most engaged, most interested people that I have to shovel my, my marketing and my ads out to. Um, let's go ahead and show you guys a little bit of an e-commerce aspect of this because I know a lot of you people are looking for e-commerce. Um, you know, this is one way to boost engagement and boost um, any kind of uh, actual marketing with an artist uh, because a lot of times people will go out there and they'll boost the ads on, on Instagram and Facebook and that just isn't really what works. You need to do these uh, back end as these dark ads as people like to call them. When it comes to uh, being a videographer, I do all kinds of different stuff. Being a wedding videographer is one of them. So I've actually ran ads to a wedding videography website. And if you wanna see uh, what that it looks like, I'm gonna show you right here. This looks like this. Now, this website is built specifically to convert people. It's built to take brides and take them on an emotional journey and make them think, hey, this guy is amazing. First things first, I have my opt-in form right here. Click to book your consultation. And immediately you're gonna see weddings that I've done in review. Proposals, engagement, weddings. You know exactly what I do as soon as you get to the site. Only the best, a lot of reassurances. And then I have testimonials. And then I have um, fallbacks and fall fail safes for these people. Facts, uh, pricing right here. I should, probably should get rid of this to be fair with you. I don't really do that pricing anymore. But people would go onto this website, they'd book their consultation, hurry, schedule before it's too late. And then they would schedule something with me based off a of Calendly website, based off a of Calendly. And look, there you go. I immediately know, I got an email saying that you just got a new lead, Apex lead sent you, Bernie Echeverria, follow up with him, good luck. If in any instance that I don't book this right here, I still have the information from that person. So if someone comes onto my website and says, I don't know if I want to run a book with him, these times don't really work for me, I can't really get to him, I still have their information to follow up with them with. Now, they're actually gonna be put into an automatic email list, getting all kinds of wedding emails. This is amazing stuff, guys. So. This would be the, uh, I guess, sales end of it, right? Where you're capturing the information and where you need a good system to capture information. On the back end over here, you guys can see that I have a wedding traffic ad, meaning that I sent people to the website. I had conversions here that uh, I don't think I ever really got too many conversions on, but it did get me a whole lot of brand new people. And then I ran my retarget campaign which brought me seven leads and I ended up closing two of those weddings. And if you can see, I spent $1,064 here. I ended up closing two weddings, which for me ended up being uh, somewhere in the range of six to $7,000. So for $1,000 spent, I made six or $7,000. You need patience for this kind of stuff. It's not just gonna come overnight. It's not just gonna come over the first hundred bucks that you spent. I remember I was like, I was at 500 bucks in and I was, I've only gotten one wedding. I don't know if this is worth. It's definitely worth if you take the time and you make sure that you do this right. So this retarget CBO campaign that I ran, you can see I have multiple ads in there. And in the retarget CBO campaign, you can see I need to recertify my pixel. I only ran into the those engagers in the 30 days and I excluded leads that have already come through and anyone who's already visited my website. I wanted to make sure that if you were on Instagram and you didn't go on my website, that you went on. And by the time you went back on, you got re-grabbed by this website retarget, bam. And this website retarget, retargeted people on the websites, but it avoided anyone who's already become a lead in the past, I don't know, 180 days. The whole point of this being that I don't wanna retarget people who've already bought from me. It's kind of annoying after seeing the ad, Keep you, know, you keep on getting the ads and you're like, Ugh, bro, I already bought your product, I'm good. So as you can see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I believe it was three more. I don't know why it's showing just fe February, but. So here would be kind of an e-commerce service-based uh, campaign set of ads here that I've been running and it's been working for me. And you can see I've spent about $1,064 on my entire wedding campaign. And the most of it, the majority of it, right, was trying to get conversions. But 
it never worked, but it did get me to reach 16,000 people. And of those 16,000 people in the whole of the US, not even just Illinois, it was seven leads that actually came through. 10 people actually ended up liking the plays, uh, liking the page. I ended up getting about 3,093 uh, through plays, and meaning uh, full on video plays on the videos. And that actually really added to it. I can show you exactly why too. You need to be smart with a lot of this stuff, okay? I ended up running an ad that looked like this. And so what I was telling you guys about needing the ads to be good. Sorry about that guys. All right, so what I was telling you guys about needing the ads to be good is that you absolutely need your ads and your ad content to be uh, quality. It can't be, you can't skimp, you, you can't skimp. You gotta do your due diligence. You gotta do your research into the market, see what ads are performing, what ads are doing well right now. And the, there's a way to do that. All right, so for those of you asking what the best ads to run in 2021 are, I'm gonna stress, stress, stress to you to keep to the basics. Do not veer too far away from what the basics are. You might have a little success here and there with something else. And honestly, it's a crapshoot. It really is a crapshoot. Facebook is a fickle beast and you can't go wrong with the basics. These are tried and true methods. Understandably so. I like to kind of revolutionize my ads with looking for what's trending, looking for what's new, looking for what the big dogs are using. If someone's using an ad successfully and it's converting and it's getting sales, why wouldn't you try to base your ad pretty much off that ad? All right, guys, that's all for me. Stay tuned for the next time. I'm going to show you guys how to go out and look for these ads and look for winning ads and find what your competition is using to beat you so that you can get on top of the game. All right, we'll see you soon.